I'm thankful that in 2011, when we said dark matter searches would fail, that the sun was a major controller of the climate, and that there were pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals, that people said these ideas were crazy. I'm grateful because it's so much more satisfying when everyone says it's impossible. I'm grateful that billions of grant dollars and the world's smartest scientists are walking the plank. Even nature knows the game is up. I'm grateful for the professors willing to publish on anisotropic expansion and electromagnetism and on the continued discovery of dust and plasma to incredible scales. I'm thankful that after we were, quote, in fantasy land of earthquake magic, there's now a textbook dedicated to pre-earthquake phenomena, and they're 90% electromagnetic. I'm thankful that the AGU has begun to add solar climate forcing into their serious discussions and publications, and that NASA and the world's climate community have finally made the first recommendation for solar particle forcing and cosmic rays for climate models. Their absence have been ludicrous. I'm thankful for the publishers since that data release, who find global warming to be terrible and our fault among whom none elected to use that data set. And I'm thankful for those who did use it, among whom 100% have found a need to revise the sun's influence upward. I'm thankful for Professor Pierre-Marie Robitaille for his commitment to science, for revolutionizing magnetic resonance imaging, and for the same principles application to astronomy. I'm thankful for not a Professor Dave and his infantile attacks on Dr. Robitaille and myself I'm thankful for the rampant name-calling, the ad hominem attacks, and general lack of understanding physics as an example of wrong, and also a reminder not to listen to these kinds of people. Because I'm thankful for the essence of his failure. It should teach you that some have complete blinders on. These aren't half-cocked theories. They were ignored or dispatched improperly, often with now-debunked science. Tomorrow's debunked science appears to be wimp dark matter, the solar constant, and random chaotic seismicity. Those ideas may have been crazy in 2011. Now, there's a reason why there are over a hundred professors and people from NASA, NOAA, ESA, National Weather Service, and USGS who are on my website, the book pre-order list, and in my inbox. You can't call the AGU, Nature, NASA, and peer-reviewed science crazy. I'm thankful for per lecture Dave because I can remember now that not everyone can see the big picture of catastrophism, and not everyone is meant to make it. Gothenburg, Lake Mungo, Mono Lake, Lachamp, Greenland, Vostok. This is a pattern. We're due again now and the Earth's magnetic field is tanking. I'm thankful to Dave for allowing my refocus on the details and for what turned out to be his tremendous support and inspiration to the end game. I'm thankful for every confirmation we share every day of these paradigms and the fact that the old relics like Wimps and Dave are so hopelessly outmatched. Dr. Robitaille is a titan of spectroscopy. I'm a speed reader and I have hyperthymesia. The writing is not only on the wall but in the stars as well. As sure as wimps are about to die, the sun controls the climate and earthquakes like to snitch on themselves. This ongoing magnetic excursion brings about the next end of the world. Bet against it if you want to. You won't be alone. You'll be joined by the world's smartest scientists and billions in grant funding. But they won't save you. I'm so thankful to Dave for helping me to make this point. Thank you, Dave.